Sensational, honey. Merely sensational. Is that a showman or is that a showman? How's Cassie? Happy as a pig in a mud hole. That's our dressing room, all right. Did you scare the pants off of him? You come here and clean this baby up. All right, as soon as I finish making Mr. Duquesne's drink. Huh? Don't bother, I'll do it. It's no bother. I said I will do it. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, come to... Oh, oh yeah, sweetheart. look at you. Oh, what a cute face. Did you want makeup on, too? We'll get you all cleaned up. I had a little brother. His name was Tiny Tim. I put him in the bathtub to teach him how to swim. He drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. He died last night with a bubble in his throat. And... Dolly, do you mind? Cassie likes it. She's smiling. It went beautifully tonight, Melinda. Just beautifully. <laughs> you know... We may be able to get along without the rope hanging from the scaffold. I don't like the way it cuts off the circulation in your arms. No, I wouldn't tamper with the trick if I were you. We've made a lot of money with it. I started using that trick in 1935. That's 10 years ago. It's outlived itself. So it's good for another 10 years, maybe 20. Uh, there's always a greater illusion, my friend. As a matter of fact, Melinda and I are planning an entirely new finale for the European tour. Well, there we are. All oh, cleaned up for Daddy. Did the new costume arrive, darling? Oh, yes, there it is. Came while you were on stage. Uh huh. Hold it up, Melinda, so we can get a good look. It's a knockout, but what's it for? Marie Antoinette, the new finale. They'll eat it up in France. Come on, Melinda, we'll show him. Duke, I don't want to. I'm tired. It should only take a second, honey. I come said on. I don't want oh, to. Oh, come on, darling. It'll just be a minute. Come along, Mr. Press Agent. We'll show you something you can really rave about. Cassie, you've got the most wonderful daddy in the world. Later on tonight, we'll come back after a good dinner and rehearsal. There it is, Buzz. I designed it myself. The workman just finished it. So that's the contraption you put out five grand for, huh? That's a lot of dough for one trick. It'll be worth it. Think of the tie-in for a French audience. Beheading a Barry Antoinette. I'll show you how it works. You run through an awful lot of wives with that contraption. Isn't it a darling little machine, Melinda? No American home should be without one. Here we go. 
Duke, that's Cassie's doll. I'll get her another in the morning. A poor substitute for you, my dear. <laughs> the darn things never work when you really need them. Mr. Kane? Yes. I'm very sorry I'm late. My plane was a bit delayed. Are the services over? We were just about to begin. Please accept my sincerest sympathy. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done, sir. And now if you'll wait over there for just a moment. All right, thank you. Excuse me. Cassie, honey, don't you remember me? It's Dolly, Dolly Bass, remember? I was your nursemaid. This is Buzz Sheridan. I was your father's manager and press agent. I, I can't get over it. You look exactly like your mother. It's like she's come back after all these hey, years. Sheridan, come here a minute. Excuse me, Cassie. Do you expect us to believe this? All right, all right, so you don't believe it. So it's no skin off my teeth, go on home. He meant this? That he positively returned from the other side? He said he'd try. He thought he could. He will, Cassie. Yes, he will. Come on now, so what's he gonna do? Jump out of the grave? You never can tell. Not with the great Duke Kane, you can't. We're ready to begin, Mr. Kane. Perhaps you will want to stand beside me. Just one second, Reverend, if you please. All right, fellas. What are those for? It was his last wish. He said he didn't want to do anything the easy way. No. Stop Wait. that. Wait. I want you to do Cassie. that. Stop it! Cassie, please. Mr. Sheridan, I must ask you to stop it's this. It's what he wanted, Cassie. He wanted this chains, a casket with a window in it? This is the most inexcusable, tasteless thing. I quite thing. agree, Mr. Kane. And so do I, Reverend. Your father made me promise I gave my word as his friend. You gave your word for what? And turning something reverent into a cheap theatrical sideshow like this? What kind of a friend are you? I've never been so disgusted in my life. What's this all about, Sheridan? Who is she? Hey, Dolly said something about her is daughter. This Duquesne's What's daughter? going on, Sheridan? Yes, yes, yes. She, she's Duquesne's daughter. She came from back east for the trip. She's the Mr. daughter? Mr. Kane? Mr. Kane. Uh, Mr. Kane, I'm sorry. 
Kane. Just a few words. Please, just uh, a moment. Wait, wait just a minute. No. How about a, a picture, talk? Mr. Kane? Uh, how do you feel about your father coming back from the grave? Did he say anything to you about it? I didn't know my father. I haven't heard or seen him for about 20 years. There's really nothing I can say or I care to say. Please leave me alone. Now get a picture, fellas. No, no. Stop it. I told you not to do that. Well, you did us a lot of good. Let's get back to Sheridan. can't be just a cheap grab for attention. Why not? Well, since when does a dead man need publicity? Since egocentric hams came into existence. Oh, no, it has no, to do Duquesne was one of the worst. No, it's something else has to be. Look, 20 years ago, this man was at the height of his career. He has money, he has fame, he has the works, and like that, he retires. I withdraws from public, from his friends. It just doesn't sound like a publicity-seeking ham to me. I'm listening. Well, something happened. I think it had to do with this. I know all about it. I wrote this story myself when I was a reporter. You... Well, now, why didn't you tell me that, huh? Duquesne loved her very much. When she walked out on him and the baby, that was it. He just cracked up. His world was gone. Didn't he ever try to find her? Police did. Came up with nothing. Evidently, Melinda wanted to get good and thoroughly lost. And she succeeded. Another man? Mm, a lot of people thought so. It's too bad. She was a beautiful woman. Yeah. I saw her today. What? Duquesne's daughter. She looks exactly like that. Exactly. She came for the funeral. Her father's will's being read tomorrow. Well, where's she been all this time? In some place in Wisconsin. Seems they farmed her out to an old maternal aunt after her mother's disappearance. Never knew her father. Well, where did you learn all this? From her. Drove her back from the cemetery. Well, might make a nice little human interest story. Yeah, it could be. You know, abandoned in life, uh, meet only at graveside, something like that. Could you set up an interview in the morning? Uh, no, 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 I'm afraid not. She's allergic to printer's ink. Well... Evidently, she talked to you. Yeah, well, actually, she uh, <clears throat> she doesn't know I'm a reporter. So, uh, who says you are? Mr. Carmichael, you have a wicked and devious mind. <laughs> know where she's staying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she won't be there. She'll be at the reading of her father's will. By the way, it's being held here. By Duquesne's express wish. <laughs> that old ham. Difficult, difficult of him. Even in death, he does everything in style. As if the dignity of the legal profession were being used for some amateur theatrical. I knew your father only slightly, Mr. Kane. But frankly, had he told me that these proceedings would be held under such ridiculous circumstances, I would have refused to represent his estate. I hope you don't find my attitude uncharitable. Also, I should like to make it abundantly clear that the late Mr. Duquesne made out this will without any legal assistance whatsoever. However, as far as I can determine, it's all perfectly legal, properly signed and witnessed according to law. Like we shouldn't get any ideas about contesting it, huh? Well, shame on you. Whatever Duke wanted, it's our duty to obey. We own that. Yes, well, I, John Hanley Duquesne, being of sound mind and body, do hereby bequeath all my property to my daughter Cassandra in the sincere hope that she may forgive me for these many long years of neglect. Well, darling, you can't win them all, huh? Please, Mr. Sheridan, there's a condition attached. I ask my daughter Cassandra, who, being my only flesh and blood kin, is the one person on earth most closely attuned to my immortal spirit, to assist me in my hope of returning from the dead by taking up residence for a minimum period of seven days in the house where I lived these past 25 years, the home to which my spirit will return and make its presence known to her. I make it a binding condition that she be in the house each night between the hours of midnight and dawn. 
if for any reason whatsoever, not excluding illness or death, my daughter is unwilling or unable to accede to this condition, I direct that my estate be divided up as follows. One half to my loyal manager and press agent, Mr. Jules Buzzy Sheridan, to join those sums he has stolen from me in the past. And one half to Miss Dolly Bast, in appreciation for having given me, as she never tired of pointing out, the best years of her life. Signed, John Hanley Duquesne. That uh, ends the reading of the testament. Miss Duquesne, may I speak to you for a moment, please? Now, I congratulate you, Miss Duquesne. This is the key to the house. Thank you. $300,000 is a great deal of money, Miss Duquesne. Should you in the future need any advice on investments, trusts, anything at all, please feel free to call me. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry he didn't leave either of you anything. He did, honey. He left us a lot of memories. He was a great man. Dolly, Mr. Vickers was telling me at breakfast how you've uh, taken care of my father all of these years. You're perfectly welcome to stay at the house if you'd like. No, I, I couldn't do that. I'll come out sometime next week to pick up my things. No, really, please feel free to. It's you he wants to come back to. I remembered you were coming out this morning. Thought you might like lunch. Oh, no, thanks. I've got a lot to do before this evening. Uh-huh. Well, how'd the will go? Your father leave anything to you? Well, yes, everything. Why are you so interested? Well, as I said, I'm an admirer of your father's. You know that old house of his always fascinated me? You going out there? Later. Well, it's an hour's drive north of here. Be happy to take you out if you like. No, thanks. I don't mean to be rude, but I think I can make it on my own. Goodbye. Somebody here expecting you? Mm, nobody. You mean you're gonna stay here all by yourself? Yes. Well... Good luck. Hi. Sorry, ma'am. What are you doing here? Well, it's what I want to tell you. The bow. I'm interested in the house. Yeah, yeah, see, I work for my uncle. He's a builder, and he's had his eye on your father's old place for a long time. Now, kind of interesting, isn't it? Look, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Yeah, Val Henderson. What he has in mind is putting up an exclusive subdivision, you know, with modern homes and view lots Mr. and Henderson. maybe a little shopping center and a bowling alley, you know. Mr. Henderson, I'm not very interested. Will you please excuse me? Well, uh, Mr. Kane, this could be an important project for this area, you That's know. That's fine. I don't know what your business ethics are, if you have any at all. They certainly don't seem to include any decency. My father was buried yesterday. Uh, uh, Miss Duquesne, if I could just have one more moment of your time, I, I, I'm going to level with you, Miss Duquesne. I feel terrible about this whole thing. I really do. It was my uncle's idea. He said, you get out there and you get a deal or you are fired. That's, he's not a very nice man, Miss Duquesne. Now, uh, how about it, huh? You know, if I thought those reporters at the funeral were contemptible, I think that you and your uncle are being beneath contempt. Uh, well, uh... Now are you going to go?
What happened? It's on a wire. Runs up to that cabinet up there. I just pressed that switch by the door. I thought it was the light switch. Your father must have been a million laughs. Come on, let's find a real light switch. Here. Well, he couldn't have had much of an electric bill. I've seen better lighting in a tunnel of love. I guess he liked the atmosphere dark and mysterious like this. Uh-huh. We've got a visitor. Hey, isn't he cute? Yeah. I wonder what he's doing in here. Well, every magician has to have a rabbit for pulling out a hatch. Hope we didn't have two. It'd get awful crowded in here. <laughs> there we go. Take care of you later. Hey, look, I don't think I'd better leave until we've checked this place out, okay? Oh? Well, it's the least I can do. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Well, shall we go get acquainted? Uh, with the rest of the house. Yep. Well, let's start on the lower floor. Okay. First catacomb to the left. <laughs> Here we have the Boer War with the original cast. Coming up, old Aunt Harry. She wasn't feeling too well that day. <laughs> well, here's a nice looking door right here. <laughs> it's a music room. Yeah. You play anything? Uh huh, a little golf. I meant a musical instrument. No, oh, I. There was much good at that kind of thing. Hey, what's in here? Uh, it's a little parlor. Hmm. Well, I better find a place to sleep. Come on, let's try upstairs. Hey, how many stories has this place got? Looks like at least four to me. I don't know, but I think we're gonna get plenty lost. Don't worry, I'm half St. Bernard. D flat. <laughs> Take your pick. Wow. Oh, that one. Okay. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. <laughs> what are these? These are. Uh... It's my father. Yeah. He used these molds to make these rubber masks of himself. What for? His act. So you'd have an assistant wear one of these on stage. The audience would think it was the great Duquesne himself. Oh. Then the assistant would disappear through a trap door or something. Two seconds later, the real Duquesne would be walking down the aisle from the back of the theater. Yeah. If your father didn't scare him to death downstairs with that skeleton, he probably finished him off in here. Uh. Look at this. You remember these? Yeah, you get a heck of a manicure with that, couldn't you? <laughs> Look at all this stuff. Hey, these swords are real. Sharp, too. Must have been used for one of those human pincushion tricks. <laughs> Mr. Henderson? Mr. Henderson? Mr. Henderson? Where are you? Hey! Hey! You quit playing games with me now. Where are you? Mr. Henderson? Mr. Henderson? 
Anderson? Mr. Henderson, will you answer me? Mr. Henderson! Pick him up. Oh! What are you doing scaring me like that? Uh, well, oh. I didn't do it on purpose. I mean, I did it on purpose. Uh, I did this on purpose. I didn't do that in there on purpose. You see, I went in this cabinet out of curiosity, and I pushed a button or something, and the back of it gave way, found myself in another room, that one. Really? Yeah. Oh, you scared me to death. Yeah, well, I didn't feel too good about it myself. Thing went back like that. Look at my hands. They're still shaking. You scared that easily? Oh, I don't know. I've never been through anything like this before. My first haunted house. Except it's not haunted, is it? Haunted houses have ghosts. This one just has tricks. Shall we continue the tour? You really scared me to death down there, you. Yeah, well, I have that effect on a lot of people. Maybe this is a bedroom. Ah, madam, your boudoir. Oh. <laughs> She was very beautiful, wasn't she? Still is. Oh, how strange. Do you realize this is the closest I've ever been to my mother? It gives me a funny feeling. Being in a room. Looking like her. Among her things. You know, I think this is gonna sound ridiculous, but... See, I was just two years old when she disappeared, but... I really think I can remember her. The way she looked. The way she smelled, you know, like soap. <laughs> she used to put her hand on my forehead. Oh, it was really soft. My Aunt Elizabeth had hands like sandpaper. She the aunt who raised you in Wisconsin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't you get along? My Aunt Elizabeth, though, yeah. <laughs> she was just too old to have a child in the house, I guess. Actually, you know, she was very good. Very strict, but very fair. Cassie, didn't your mother ever try to contact you all through these years? No. Why blame me neither to my father? My Elizabeth used to talk like this, she'd say. Good riddance to both of them. Consider yourself lucky, Cassandra. Stage folk, immoral, irresponsible, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to pretend that my dad just loved my mother deeply. And he loved me, too. And he was just around the corner someplace, just waiting to come to me. You're an amazing person, Cassie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How yeah. come? Well, because you have every reason in the world to be bitter, and you're not. Bitter. That is just a word that angry people use to hide the fact they want to be loved, that's all. By her, by him. I have wanted that all my life. Too much to hide behind bitterness. Well, your father left you everything, left you this house. He must have loved you. Then why all the years of neglect? I can't answer that one, Cassie. Only he could have told you that. Well, look, uh, I'll go downstairs and get your suitcases. You just relax there for a while. Okay. Hey! Don't bring up the smaller one. It's full of cold roast beef sandwiches. What? Do you like cold roast beef sandwiches? Yeah, are you asking me for dinner? If you like cold roast beef sandwiches, I'm asking. I'm accepting. <laughs> okay.
is it? Oh, this silly thing that scared me. Yeah, well, uh, he doesn't seem too pleased to see us at that. You feeling better? Mmm, sandwich helps. You want another one? No, no, thanks. I've had plenty. But my compliments to a most charming hostess. Oh, thank you, gallant sir. Cassie, you know, I don't think you ought to stay here alone. Well, I'm not going to be alone. Mr. Vickers, he's my attorney. He said he'd arranged for a housekeeper to come and stay with me. She'll be here sometime tomorrow. Yeah, I meant tonight. Oh, I'll be all right. I'm just going to jump in bed and stay there. I promise to open no doors, no closets, no nothing. I've had enough practical jokes for one day. Yeah, I guess you have. Val, mm. tell me something about yourself. Do you know that all I know about you is your name, Val Henderson, and you work in real estate with your uncle? Well, there's not much to tell about me, really. I'm just an ordinary guy. After the gypsies captured me from the palace and my wicked twin brother took over the throne in my place, nothing much happened. I was uh, captured by pirates, spent a couple of years as a white hunter in Africa, and then became an international jewel thief. <laughs> Are you ever serious? Sure. Sometimes I get very serious. Belle, I'm awful tired. Let me walk you home. Okay. Only as far as the stairs now. Yes, sir. You know, I think it's a dreadful shame that you are wasting your time in real estate. I mean, being a jewel thief. Yeah, well, actually, I lied to you about that. I'm not in real estate. Oh, what do you do? Same old thing. Brain surgery. <laughs> well, good night. Thanks. You're welcome. Good night. What was that? I don't know. Val. Let's go find out. Sounds like he's coming from everywhere. It's dying down. Don't leave me. Who knows you're here? I don't know. Vickers, Dolly, or Sheridan, maybe. this, please. It's a man. He's just breathing. Hello. Don't hang up. Who is this, please? Hello? Hello? Be something like this. That's sobbing too. Hi fi.
Actually, it's a recording. I don't care. It's as if the whole house were breathing. Listen, um, I'm not gonna let you stay here alone tonight. I'll sleep on that couch. You all right? Huh? Look, uh, I think we can use a nightcap, too. Come on. Feels both good. sobbing figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see that ventilator? Yeah. When I went all over the house this morning, must be dozens of those things all over. I think the sound came up from somewhere down below, up through the ventilation system, and echoed through the whole house. Well, from where down below? Uh, I don't know. He probably had another tape recorder stash somewhere. I got a feeling this whole place is rigged for stereo. <laughs> Wish I could find the key to that door. What do you think you're gonna find? I don't know. Maybe the largest collection of sound effects tapes in the world. How are you feeling? Oh, fine. Things sure look better in the morning, don't they? Yeah, let's have breakfast. Breakfast? Yeah. While you were asleep, I uh, drove down along the highway, found a little store about five miles down. How dumb the busy little bee. Not too well. <laughs> Drop the eggs. You like scrambled eggs? I love scrambled eggs. Oh, isn't this charming? Coffee's hot, eggs are cold. Ooh, look at these. Yeah. I didn't know you could cook. I thought I'd close that. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Why don't you marry me? Haven't tasted your eggs yet. Hey, where does this door go? Uh, it uh, goes to the basement. Went all through it this morning. Dusty. Hey, let's try the coffee. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Hmm? Coffee? Just like uptown. There you go. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Ah, oh, you like it, huh? Mmm. Very bad. It grows on you. Mm -hmm. Now that sound is real. Are you expecting somebody? Yeah, the new housekeeper. Come on. Uh, well, come on. Yeah. Hey, what's her name? Mrs. Riordan, that's her name. Does she know what kind of job she's taking? I don't know. Mr. Vickers just said he got somebody from the employment office. I hope she's got a good sense of humor. Yeah. Hey, Fifteen dollars. Hello hey. there. Well, how you doing? Fine. You must be Mrs. Riordan. The name's Ramona. Ramona? <laughs> well, it, it's a very romantic name. Yeah, well, don't get any ideas. You, Mrs. Duquesne? Uh, no, ma'am. Miss Duquesne. This is just a friend of mine, Val Henderson. Hi. Not your husband? Nope. <laughs> no, no, she uh, wouldn't have me, doesn't like my cookie. Oh, I'll Val, get, that. get her back. Yeah, she'll go right that way. Hmm. Who owns this? I don't like open cars. I can't stand them. Now, I want you to get one thing straight. I don't do no cooking, you know, just straight housework. Light housework is my business. Yes, I understand perfectly. That's fine. Uh, Ramona, did Mr. Vickers tell you anything about this house? Nope, not a thing. Why? Is there something I ought to know? Oh, no, nothing special. Just some little things. I'll explain them later. It smells awfully dusty in here. Yeah, well, we'll get somebody in to do the heavy house cleaning, Ramona. It won't be too bad. These big houses, they get mighty drafty, and I catch colds easy. Oh? Well, we were very comfortable last night. Warm as toast, weren't we, Val? Yes, yes. We? Last night? Oh, she means last evening. Oh, it was just perfect. <laughs> it was a little noisy, maybe. Noisy? Uh-huh. Uh, Ramona, my father left me this house, you see, and uh, he was a magician. Sort of a practical joker, too, wasn't he, Val? Yes, yes, sure was. So, uh, you see, it's possible that you just might... Your things. What, what, what kind of things? 
Well, I don't know exactly. Some noises, something like that. Well, it's something that sounds like a woman crying. You don't believe in ghosts, do you, Mrs. Riordan? Bowed. Ghosts? Uh-huh. No. <laughs> well, we were just having some coffee. Why don't you have some with us before I get your room, OK? Yeah, that might make me feel better. Yeah, right down here. Uh, Mrs. Riordan, would you care for this last piece of toast? Huh? I say, would you care for another piece of toast? No, no, I don't eat much breakfast. Uh -huh. Say, where did you say that crying came from? You see that door there? Yeah. Well, that goes to the basement. It came from down there, we think. Oh, Val, stop. Hmm. Ramon, I wouldn't worry about it. I think it's just a practical joke. Yeah. A record or something like that. A record of a woman crying? Mm -hmm. There ain't no such thing. No. Well, I'd better get with it. Mm. I wonder where they put the vacuum cleaners around here. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Come on, have another hot cup of coffee first, oh, Ramona. Here it is. Mr. Kane, I put in my eight hours every working day. That's what I get paid for, see? And then I relax on my own time. Well, I just thought I'd help you a little bit later if you want. You go ahead and have your coffee. I better get up on that front hall. And I don't need no help. When I do a job, I do it. Yes, ma'am. You know, I get the distinct impression Mrs. Riordan isn't ever going down in that basement. Me too. I don't care. I just feel better having somebody around. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Where have I been? Oh, I don't mean that. I mean here, from now on, permanently. You've been very nice, sir. Lots of laughs. Hey, let me pour you a cup of coffee. All right. Guess you'll be kind of anxious to get back to the city, huh? Oh, no, no. I'm in no hurry. Matter of fact, I've gotten kind of attached to this old place. Oh, yeah, huh? Mm-hmm. There's something about it I like. Hey, did she say the front hall? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh, what is she? She did. forget about that house today. Let's go somewhere. All right. Hey, what about your job? Oh, I have a very indulgent uncle. Look, it's a beautiful day. Let's find some real normal, everyday people and have a relaxed afternoon. What do you say? Go. <laughs>
safety valve pillow, specially designed for pretty girls who can't make up their mind. You lucky little winner, you. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, keep pitching, pal. Keep pitching, boy. Yes, sir. Step right up, folks. Tired? Oops. <laughs> we must have walked miles. Yeah, we did. What time's it getting to be? Uh, like five. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should think about getting back to the house soon, huh? We're gonna have to stop at the grocery store and get some groceries because you're invited for dinner, all right? Yep. Yeah. Hey. I've had an awful lot of fun today, Val Anderson. Thank you. So have I. Cassie. <laughs> do yourself a favor. <laughs> What's that? Don't go back to that house. I have to. That's the agreement, you know. Yeah. Seven days, midnight till dawn. Break the agreement. No $300,000 a yeah, year. Besides, you know, a day away from it, it even becomes kind of funny, doesn't it? <laughs> As a matter of fact, believe it or not, I miss it. It's my own private amusement park, that's what it is. Cassie, you know, you're, uh, you're very impressionable, and, uh, mm. yeah, you are, and you're sensitive, and, uh, <laughs> I think you're lonelier than you'll admit. Well, Daddy's gonna show up any night now, and I'm not gonna be alone. He gave you a bad time last night, and it could get worse. Yeah. Building up to a tremendous finale. Ouch. Ta-da! Back from the dead. Yeah, what if he does come back? <laughs> oh, you're not gonna go psychic on me now, are you? No, but I think if you spend... <laughs> If you spend too many more nights alone in that house, it'll start to get to you. You mean I'm so sensitive and impressionable that I'll be seeing things? Well, or doing things, maybe even dangerous things. Like? Like, uh, like maybe getting scared out of your wits and like Ooh. running blindly down that staircase. Like maybe breaking your neck. Please, darling, my pretty neck. Uh, your exquisite neck. Hmm, that's better. So what? So if I conjure him up, what do you think I'm going to see, baby? We see what we want to see, Casey. Then there's no problem. He'll be tall and strong. Well, he'll be handsome anyway. <laughs> and he'll be loving and he'll be great fun to be around. I tell you what. Let's forget about shopping. Huh? We'll drive down the coast highway, mm. stop in a little spot, to get a big steak, a bottle of wine. Uh-oh. And we'll have some uh, soft talk and mm. candlelight. What kind of talk? Soft. Just that show, let the flow and flow. I'm never gonna let my monkey go. Go, go, go.
Wait here. Is it? What happened? What are you doing here? What's the matter? What is she doing here? I don't know, but something scared her half out of her mind. What is it, Dolly? What frightened you? Well, I saw... I... You saw what? What did you see? I am... Um, your father... up there. He was at the top of the stairs. He was just standing there. Uh, That's impossible. You stay here. There's a room at the top of the stairs. It's locked. It was always locked. He was the only one who ever went in it. What's in it? I don't know. You know where the key is? Yes. Well, where is it? Get it for us. I can't. It was buried in his grave with him. It was his wish. Come on, let's go downstairs.
here every night since he died just to be near his things. His memory. Yeah, we heard you last night. You must have loved him a great deal to cry for him like that. And yet, in the end, I failed him. Even I failed him. You failed him how? He must have known he was dying. He kept it to himself. He wanted to spare me the pain of it. He made me go away for a week, a vacation. The next time I saw him, he was dead in his coffin. He died alone. I'll never forgive myself that. He needed somebody around him all through the years. And why didn't he ever try to contact me? You don't know how lonely it was. Don't I? Well, don't you think a thing like that works both ways? Why didn't you try to reach him? Because I didn't think he cared. Cared? He worshipped you. Dolly, if I've made a mistake all these years, I've got to know. Please tell me something. I don't think I would say forgive me to a memory, but... But I want to. Please tell me. Twenty years ago, the night your mother went away, it was like the end of the world to him. He wouldn't believe she was gone. Night after night, he'd sit out front in the music room. He'd say, Dolly, where's Melinda? She hasn't played her harp or sung for me for a week. Where is she? And we'd walk all over the house searching for Melinda. He had tape recordings of her singing and playing, and I'd play one of them. And... He'd get easy in his mind and he could sleep again, but the next night it would be the same thing all over again. Are you saying Cassie's father went mad after his wife left him? Grief can drive you mad if you love deeply enough. Your Aunt Elizabeth came and got you, Cassie. And that's not a scene I care to remember. I can imagine that, poor darling. And then, about three months ago, he saw your picture in the paper with a story about how you'd been chosen for some club or something, and he said, look, Dolly, it's Melinda. And I tried to tell him it was you, Cassie, but he just kept saying it's Melinda. I found my Melinda over and over. That afternoon, I typed a long letter to him, begging his Melinda to come back. And then I mailed it. I didn't get the letter. It was sent back, unopened. And Elizabeth? Val? He got worse after that letter came back. He'd lost his Melinda for the second time. <laughs> I think that's when he began to die. Oh, Doc, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if only I know. <laughs> He's come back, has he? He's come back. Cassie, can I talk to you for just a minute, please, alone? Yeah, it's important. It'll just take a minute. Come on. <coughs> Get your coat. We're taking Dolly to that bus station. What? I was going to ask her to stay here. Yeah, I don't know. 
I was afraid you were going to say something like that. We're getting her out of here, Cassie. Why? Because she's not good for you. And besides, I think she's putting on the performance of her life. Val, that's ridiculous. Do you believe she saw your father's ghost on the staircase? Hmm? No. All right, what did she see? Well, she saw something. Well, what, a shadow? The rabbit? What? I don't know. Maybe it's as you said at the amusement park, Val. She's a, a person who sees what she wants to see and needs to see. And so are you. Now, you keep her around here, needling you and bugging you, and she'll have you seeing spooks in another couple of days. So I'll be seeing spooks. Do you really believe her? You actually want to believe her? Oh, Val, that's nonsense, and you know it. Then why are you defending her? I am not defending Cassie, her. Cassie, listen to I yourself. I am not defending her. You're sore at me because I'm trying to talk you out of something you want to believe. But you can't wish the dead back to life, not for all the love or all the need in the world. I know that. All right. It just seems like a simple act of kindness that I can do for Dolly for taking care of my father. Cassie, I, I don't think that what Dolly is doing deserves any act of kindness from you. What do you mean? Well, if you're scared out of this house before the seven days, who stands to gain? Well, Dolly and Sheridan. Dolly and Sheridan. Now, Val, I told you that was ridiculous. Now, she saw something on the stairs. She was terrified. Cassie, I think she has you more hooked than you realize. Don't let her stay around you. Val? Cassie, please. OK. OK, you win. All right. Get your coat. No. Will you take her, please? I'd like a glass of hot milk, and I'd like to go to bed. All right, well, are you sure you'll be all right? Yes. I suppose you think that Sheridan's up in that locked room there waiting to scare me out of my wits, huh? We hurry back? I'll hurry back. I'll be waiting. you can make it back to town? Yes. I gotta find Buzz and tell him what happened tonight. Mm -hmm. Where'll you find Buzz? At a place called Big Mike's. That's a bar. Buzz practically lives there. I gotta tell him he, he'll want to know that Duke Cain came back. Yeah. I'll bet he'll want to know. Duke Cain coming back, why don't you come off it? I got a little advice for you. I thought you'd be interested. Don't you think I don't know who you are? So don't you be so smart with me. Who am I? You're some wise punk who's just after her money. That's who you are. Well, listen, you're not gonna get a dime. Who's gonna stop me, you and Sheridan? Duquesne, that's who's Duquesne. gonna... Duquesne. Duquesne's gonna stop you because he loves his daughter. It's been a great performance, Dolly. Damn. Bonville's dead. Nobody's asking for an encore. Oh, I'm sorry. Good night, You're Dolly. You're gonna be damn you!
What is this thing This funny Just who can solve its mystery? Why should it make a fool? That's why I ask the Lord Real, all right. Real wax. That's me. That's me. Cassie, it's a likeness of your mother. They must have used it in some magic act or other. How did it get here? It, it was in a box at the top of the stairs. The rabbit knocked it over at me. Honey, it's all right. It's <laughs> enough to drive anyone bad. <laughs> What you're gonna get out of Sheridan. Well, I don't either, but it's worth a try. But if Dolly and Sheridan are behind this, he's not gonna admit it. Maybe he'll give himself away by covering up too much. Anyway, I want to talk to Dolly again. While she's sober. You sure you don't want to come along? <laughs> nope. 
I am going to change my clothes, put her in the garden, and then I'm going to lie in the sun for hours and hours and hours. It'll do you good. See you later. Big Mike around? You're looking at him, mister. What can I do for you? Uh, I'm trying to find Buzz Sheridan. I'll get him for you. He doesn't like to be awakened abruptly. Uh-huh. Thanks. Buzz. Buzz. Buzz! There's somebody here to see you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sheridan, my name's Val Henderson. I'm a friend of Cassie Duquesne's. Oh, yeah. I know. Dolly told me. She called me up last night. Thanks. She told me the whole bit. Well, she believes he came back from the dead to her, so why spoil it? Well, I'm trying to help Cassie Duquesne. <laughs> Dolly told me what you suspect. Mm -hmm. Well, you're wrong, mister. You're dead wrong. You can accuse Dolly of all kinds of things, but she would never do anything to harm Duquesne's daughter. And just in case you've got any ideas about me, you can forget him. I loved you. Why, something glowed from him. A remarkable presence. Maybe a man like that never does really die. His presence is still all around. Maybe he can come back from the dead. Do you really believe that? I wish it. Dolly wishes it. Let's be honest, Mr. Sheridan. Don't you also wish that you and Dolly could make a two-way split of $300,000? I don't have to listen to you. Dolly took care of him for 20 years. He didn't leave her a dime. Now, she's no saint. Wouldn't she expect something? So go talk to Dolly. You know her number, Mr. Sheridan? I know her number. Four six three zero oh, seven nine nine. It's a rooming house. And you're way off base, mister. Mike, you should really de louse this joint. Duquesne. What are you doing here? Who are you? My name's Joe Russell, Miss Duquesne. I wonder if I could ask you a few questions. About what? You know Miss Dolly Bast? Yes, I do. Is something wrong? She called our paper this morning, said your father kept his word, came back from the grave last night. Now I know who you are. You're one of the reporters at the funeral, aren't you? I just wanted to check her story out with you before we... Cassie! Over here, Val. I'll only take just a few minutes I'm of your time. I'm very sorry. It'll only take a second. Hey, whose car is that out? Hey, Val. Well, what do you know? No wonder you wouldn't give me the story. Boy, do you move fast. 
You know each other? Oh, well, sure. We used to work together on the Daily Exchange. That's my paper. Before he moved over to the Journal. We've known each other for... Fo Cassie! Did I do something wrong? Cassie. Cassie, wait a minute. Come on, honey, wait. No. Look, let me talk you to you. You lied to me. Look, if I told you I was a reporter, you no. wouldn't have let... Just a minute. Don't. You wouldn't have let me near you. Now, I started this out to get a story. I admit it. But that's all changed now. You don't have to explain anything to me. Just go. Well, it's a hell of a time to tell you, but I'm in love with you. If you have any decency at all in you, Val, please go. I have asked you to go. Oh, come off it now, Cassie. What's so terrible about... I want you to go write your newspaper story about the silly heiress you fooled into letting you stay in the magician's house and into falling in love. Yeah. And into... Cassie! Cassie! Now open the door! Very sorry, Val, but how was I to know? Yeah. Cassie, now open the door! Cassie! Cassie. Cassie, now open the door. I want to explain. I want you to understand. Cassie!
Listen. I don't know. In Los Angeles someplace. Please hurry, please. there I need you Cassie what's the matter that room upstairs the one that was always locked there's a box in there with a body a body of a woman with no head please it was horrible Cassie get hold of yourself now it can't be real it must be another one of his props I don't care I don't care please get me out of here all right wait a minute now listen listen to me lock the door Please hurry. Please. I'll be there as soon as I can.
ghost. You're alive. You faked that whole thing. Your death, your funeral. Why? Why? You wouldn't come back to me. But... But I would have come if I'd known you wanted me to. You returned my letter. Years of waiting. And then when I found you, you refused me. No, I didn't get the letter. Believe me, if I'd gotten the letter, I would have come to you. You would have. I didn't think you wanted me. If you only knew how I hoped and prayed with this. I wanted you to want me. To love me. But I always loved you, Melinda. Melinda, that's Cassie. That's your daughter, Cassie. No. I know how you've been jealous of Melinda all through the years, but you can't lie anymore, Dolly. She's come back. Today, I'm not Melinda. Melinda's dead. No. No. Yes. Yes, she's gone. She died that night, Duke. Oh, I brought her here myself. I buried her in the woods Dolly. behind the house. No, that's not true. That's not true, Dolly. Melinda... Melinda's here. Dolly? How did my mother die? The trick. The guillotine. Or something went wrong. I know it'll work now, Melinda. I know it'll work no, now. No, don't, no! Oh, Melinda... No, Dolly, 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 You see, Melinda, I saved it. Saved everything all through the years. <laughs> Darling, 
What are you doing out here? Dr. Ain, he's back. He didn't die. What? It was another one of his illusions to get Cassie here. Where's Cassie? Uh, she's with him. He thinks it's Melinda. He's gonna use the guillotine again. The guillotine? That's how Melinda died that night. He never would accept it. He never would believe she was dead. Come on. One of the most tragic and malign figures in, in all the, the annals of recorded history, the beauteous Marie Antoinette, doomed by the, by the, by the bestial malevolence of the revolutionary mob to end her glorious life upon this, this cruel instrument of bloody torture. La belle dame sans merci. And why did she have to die for allegedly having remarked upon being informed that the poor had no bread? Why then, let them eat cake? <laughs> now, I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, is that a statement showing heartlessness or, or merely a warm, generous, and delightful humor? <laughs> Usher the gentleman to his seat. I'm glad you came, sir. And now, before your very eyes, you're about to see the ghastliest, cruelest, most sickening act of legal vengeance ever enacted upon a beautiful woman. The actual beheading of of Marie Antoinette. It is October the 16th, the year of our Lord, 1793. The hour, 15 minutes past the stroke of noon. Oh, if you're squeamish, sir, close your eyes. If you're faint of heart, turn aside. Or, or better still, perhaps you should leave the auditorium. Mr. Duquesne! Um. Um. The follow spot. The follow spot, Mr. Duquesne, it's not working. The audience can't see you.
Cassie? What's going on upstairs? Come on, Dave.